Hello, it's Anna from Shiny Happy Art and the Paint Along the Month Club. Welcome to card number five. So it is sketch number five of the hashtag Shah Dogs Cats series. And today we are painting Debbie Mo Moggs, Wolf Hound and Border Collie Diesel. She's, Diesel is seven years old. Debbie said she is, or he is her best friend and she could not do without him. But what a cute dog. Knew I just had to paint Diesel, so thank you very much for sending in your photo, Debbie. Now, if you would like to send a photo of your pet in to be considered for this series, I've got the address here somewhere. Here we go. It's back to front. Hello at shinyhappyart.com. I'll show you that in a minute. But please don't send it to me any other way. I just can't handle the DMs and the, the Instagram messages and the um, the texts if you know me personally. It'd be really great if you could just it to send your photos to hello at shinyhappyart.com via email. So that's exactly what Debbie did. And today we're going to sketch Diesel. Now I am gonna to stick to the paper that I changed to uh, last sketch. So it's watercolor Winslow Aquarelle paper. It's just not as textured as the first lot. And I think it's working better because I'm sketching it first with Prismacolor pencils. So that's what I'm going to go with today. And if you are joining me from the, the being uh, finding out about me at the Golden Bone Bakery. Thank you very much for um, taking a look. Um, I'm delighted to know Katarina from Golden Bones and she's sponsoring this month's prize. So if you tag a friend in the comments, like both of our pages and tag a friend in the comments, you'll go in the draw that we draw at the end of the month. So that is a lot of bit of backstory too. But I think we should just get stuck into it today. I'm really looking forward to painting Diesel and I'm going to go back to the Vibrant palette in the Vo, Vo, Van Gogh Vo, uh, watercolors range because it's, it looks like she's got a vibrant personality. Um, that's the sampler there for that. So using this palette mainly today to paint Diesel. Okay. So, of course, setting the timer for 15 minutes, I actually have that organized this time, much better than last time. Uh, so yes, we'll um, get that going. All right, let's tip the camera down onto the table so that you can see exactly what I'm going to do here. G'day, Wendy. Thanks for saying hi. Do say hi and tell me where you're from. That would be wonderful. Um, if it's your first time here, we've obviously done a little bit of watercolor in this series already. I'll just get everything going on the screen here as well. And then I can see what you can see too. So, okay, we'll just move that over a little bit. This is the paper that I'm using, as I mentioned. This is lovely diesel. Okay. And, um, okay, that's the brand of watercolor I'm using. This is the timer. I'll just pop that up there. Um, the Golden Bone Bakery, of course. That's the email address. That's where the collection is already. So I've actually started uploading all of these videos in there. If you'd like to see them off Facebook and with all the reference photos and everything, that's the place to go and get them half price. So it's $22 early bird price until the project's finished. And if you're looking for any of the supplies that I'm using, you'll find it at kit.co slash shiny happy art. And that's all my community service announcements, I think. All right, so we'll pop them, I don't know, around the place. Okay, but the most important one is this picture of Diesel and the card that I'm going to paint it on. So I really hope this gives you the confidence to have a go at painting your own pet uh, in some way because pets are really, oh look, they're forgiving about so many things. They're particularly forgiving about your art skills. So I say paint them, draw them, love them. Okay, so just need a bit of scratch paper there. I'm going to get this started. So the 15 minute countdown is on. This time, because I have got a bit more time than I did in May, when I did five minute May, um, I'm drawing first and it takes a bit longer, but I've got a bit longer, so that's the way it is. Hi, Lynn. I painted Lynn's cat yesterday. Debbie's watching, fantastic. He's watching too. Diesel's watching himself being drawn. Hi, Karen in Canada. And hi, um, Danielle as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the top of it. I sort of, the face is so gorgeous. I do wanna catch this, uh, this bandana. Um, so her legs, his legs might go off the page a bit, but let's see how we go, hey? Um, part of the thing about setting a timer is that you can't wait too long to figure out what, what you're going to do. So there I'm looking at the angle of his head, then across to his ear, down again. This ear comes across, just looking at the, the, 
the negative space, the outside shape of that ear. So I'm not looking at it as an ear actually, I'm just sort of putting the pieces together. Now the cheek comes down a little lower than that ear and comes up to be this shape of the, the black of his fur and his eyes sitting in just in from that joint where the ear is sticking out of the head there and sitting in the middle of this black panel. So if, if, if you wanted to change anything about um, your dog and cat portraits, I'd say you could make the eye a little bit bigger if you wanted to. Okay, that'll be just a little bit friendlier. Now, it all changes of course when I add color. So I'm just sort of mapping out where this darker color will be. That will be probably black. I'm still deciding. I sort of want to give this fellow a little bit of extra rainbowness. Okay, down through the top of the head, the white goes off to the side again. I'm looking at this shape here now. Okay, so it's a big wedge. Now, of course, I meant to start earlier again today, but I've had lovely visitors, friends from Brisbane. My brother popped over. I had to get my daughter to school. She's doing a musical this week. And uh, now she's messaged and would like some dinner delivered. Uh, so that will be what I'm doing next. Also um, having a commission collected today, a bee painting that I did uh, for a group of friends. So um, I really, really loved painting it and I'm looking forward to sharing it when I have permission. Now the nose, just where does it sit? Okay, so this is sort of where the black is finishing and the nose is about halfway. Okay, now if I divided that in half, the nose would go to halfway and halfway again. So half, halfway and halfway, up and over. It's pretty big because it's foreshortened because it's closer to the camera. And if it wasn't a camera, it'd be closer to your face <laughs> if you were painting from life. Okay, so it's a bit difficult to see where the nostrils are in there, but I'll just figure that out. And the more painting or no, more dog and cat pictures you draw, you'll get more of an idea of where things should fit um, and where they will, are likely to sit. Okay, Janelle says he's very dashing. Um, Karen's catching us in the morning, that's okay. You're in Canada, we'll be here. Okay, so. Okay, so just down into the top of his mouth here, that's sort of a gray black area. Sweet little black mouth. Now my dog maybe is actually underneath the table right now. So it feels lovely drawing your dog, Debbie, while my dog is in the room. Okay, and she's got this, this fluffy, what, what uh, this is probably the first sticking out, isn't it, from the top of the um, bandana. Gives her a bit of a ruffle. Okay, so the bandana is coming out from halfway across the black here. So this is the black panel. So this is where the bandana will start. Bit of a bend and then out again to get the shape of the bandana. So it will just be her face. No way I could fit in the rest of her body, his body. Okay, down to the side of that bandana. Ever so cute. Um, but there is a bit more fur going on here under his chin. Then there's some black fur out the side, white, it's dinting in a bit and out again. It's black there obviously and a bit more fur going on here. Okay so that's a pretty good sketch version I think. The ear will flop down. Now that I've done the outside I can sort of fill in what's what's going on in the inside. The ear is folding over, flopping down. I'll make that very dark because I know I want that to be dark in the shadow of that floppy ear. Okay, and I might make these nostrils super dark too. Now to get a darker mark, I'll come back and use the pencil on top of the wet watercolor. That will allow me to get a much darker mark. So I know I can come back and add that. I can also add some black. Just trying to get that right looking for his expression yeah he'll look cuter when his nose is black absolutely sure of it hi lee hi leanne hi robert hi tandra tara adrian okay kathy too gabriella 
Bron, Dagmar, Therese, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm doing this on the main the Facebook page because um, it seems that more people see it there at the moment. Um, and I'll do the finished versions into the, the Facebook group if you're a member of the Draw and Paint with Anna Facebook group. Okay, <sighs> let me think. I might put, looking at this Vibrance palette, I might put the color around him actually go because I love the black and white and that is definitely <clears throat> a big part of of diesel so if I choose I won't use black this is Payne's Gray so in in this kit here which is the travel set of Van Gogh's Payne's Gray is basically a bit of blue or well what have they got here pigment black 6 and pigment yellow 16 okay if I was mixing it with um, acrylics I would be using ultramarine blue and black so it's good to have a look at the recipes but so for this particular watercolors in this particular brand that's how they're making this color so it's not like a dead black it really is a a um a more, oh, it's got a bit more it's got a bit of gentleness to it i suppose can always bring some solid black in if i want to and i will use my gel pen to bring in some of these white hairs Okay, it does need to be really dark around the eye though. So I've got a bit more pigment on my brush now. So I'm bringing in this really dark area. I'm sort of, you can see I'm holding it quite close to the top, so I really am drawing with the paint right now. I want it to be darker under there. But as I let more water come through, it will be lighter. Now I can always add more paint on top. So when you're watercoloring, don't, don't, try and resist or we know just let the water be part of it like I always come back and add darker colors and I actually did come back and add some darker colors to some of the earlier paintings the paintings I did earlier this week of dogs and cats because it absorbed into the into the paper and that um, makes it a little more dull so just know you can always come back and add more but it's hard to take harder to take it away so um, don't be worried about like using the water and in terms of adding some white especially while you're learning if you're not entering a competition that forbids it or something you can bring more white paint in it doesn't even need to be watercolor paint it can be anything you like acrylic gouache anything you like we actually have a lot more freedom than we think because we've been brought up in our school system um, and everything well there were so many things back then that were right and wrong I'd like to encourage experimentation really but it is nice to watch a demonstration and have an idea of what's possible I think that's important too hi Donna that's wonderful okay now the nose this is a pretty important part as well of course but if I keep it watery I know I can bring more color in more darker tone this is a little mustache here it's a little bit Hitler I'll soften that with some white um, with some white pen marks so it won't be quite as dark as that when I'm finished just putting in a few of these the very tip of the brush a few of these hairy marks might be easier to do those actually when when I've got the background color on though so I won't get too worried about that this is dark here as well there's light in there bit of dark okay so that's a good first pass I think with that keeping an eye on the time as well because I'm adding a lot more detail um, than usual okay now I said I wanted some rainbow colors to reflect his personality I'll start with the um, the bandana though put on some blue I don't know that I actually want the whole fox thing going on because it would distract from the eyes that I want to be the main feature so I'm just going to sort of use the colors the, the colors of that bandana
and that's a compositional choice. When you're using a photo reference, remember you don't have to paint exactly what's there. Put a couple of photos together if you haven't got what you want. Um, don't think, especially when, like if you're drawing a piece of fruit, for example, and I'm just picking some colors here that are next to each other on the color wheel. But if you're drawing a piece of fruit and that apple has a mark on it, you have to decide as the artist if you're going to include that mark, okay? Because the odds are good, but if you do include the mark and you show it to somebody, that's what they're going to see first. So if that is the message that you want to send, like it's a, like you want to communicate that that apple had a bad spot or whatever it was, by all means, go ahead and include it on there. But if that isn't part of your message, you don't want that to be the first thing people can notice or will notice, then it's totally up to you. It's your call as the artist to um, leave that out or make it not have a mark on it. By the same token, you could include a mark on something that you're painting in order to sort of make that noticeable, make it not normal. So you do get to sort of manage the message a bit as an artist. Don't think, you don't ever feel restricted by the references that you have. If you, if you don't have the reference that does it for you, just keep looking. We'll go out and take your own reference photo. Or we'll put a few photos together. Okay, don't think you need to be limited. So I'm making that choice here. I'm adding a separate second blue. Because that makes it more interesting than one. And look at these areas of white that I'm leaving behind, these holidays. Now I will put the brown in for his eyes. Hmm. Maybe the burnt sienna here. Yep, that'll do. Testing the color on my sheet there. And I have left a bit of white in those eyes. Okay, deliberately. A bit more dark on the nose now. There's a bit of shine just above the nostrils though. And if anything, those nostrils are darker. So I'll leave some of that shine behind. And while that is still wet, I'm going to come in with black Prismacolor pencil. Oop, very sharp. And mark that on. So it's just, just noticeable. Also going to use this Prismacolor pencil to get in nice and tight with that eye. I didn't want it to bleed because that color is still wet around there. And these dogs and cats do pretty much have good eyeliner. They do have eyeliner going on. So don't forget to mark that in. I'll also use the pencil to mark in a bit more hair, fur, hairiness, bit of texture. Got one minute to go, so I need to get some of this white gel pen happening as well. Okay, there we go. Fur, fur. It's fun. Liking him, Debbie. Okay, gel pen. Check that it works. Yes, it does. Notoriously unpredictable, these gel pens. This is a Uniball Signo gel pen, but I don't know that I have a favorite. My favorite is just the one that works at the time I need it to work. And these don't always do that. A few white hairs there, more white hairs here. See how I lightened that, that little mustache with the white gel pen? I will put the highlight in there on his eyes. And 16 seconds, but I can go a little bit over if I need to. Just breaking up that fold in the ear a little bit. I will come back in with the black. So I want that pupil to be blacker. There we go. Oops. I really need this to stand out. The eyes are where the darkest darks and the lightest lights are. So that blue pupil just wasn't doing it for me. It wasn't dark enough, okay? So I've gone in and added the black there in the pupil. A few more hairs here, just looking around. I could probably spend another 15 minutes on this actually. Um, I'll come back in with the, whoops, black on my brush. That's not good, is it? I can lift that off there. Cleaning it off there, cleaning the palette. Pop a bit of red. And this also connects, connects you to the color that is behind. 
the subject. And see how I'm adding, like I went really watery. I probably didn't go as watery as it has dried in my first application, but adding a bit more in this, this pass now can make it more vibrant. And vibrant is what I wanted to communicate. A bit of yellow now with the paint on my brush. But vibrant is what I wanted to communicate about Diesel. I'm wondering if Debbie would agree that that's part of his personality. He looks like the type that could cope with the rainbow. Well, but I am pretty happy with that. I think it needs a little bit of red in the brown. Of the rich, add a bit of extra depth to the eyes. They are so important. There we go. And just dividing that up a bit. Bringing back in my blue pencil. And we are done. I actually haven't got any paint on the paper here. I've left it behind. So it's something that I don't do in acrylics, but I'm happy to do in watercolor. Wow, I've got paint all up my hand. <laughs> oh, a fair bit of it on the table. But that was fun. Thank you so much, Debbie. I'm going to put my face back on now. Face back on, on camera anyway. Okay, so just looking, a couple more comments there. Thank you very much for sending your photo in, Debbie. That's fabulous. Um, there are some really cute photos there. So thank you to everyone who's already sent them in. But there we go. There is Diesel where I deliberately made the decision not to include the foxes on the pattern of the fabric, um, but just stuck to the colour and let that take, um, take centre stage. But we are now up to five, five um, in this series, okay? So I will go in now and upload this video to the online collection. Um, if you are interested in that, here it is, I'm looking at all my cards here. This is back to front, bit.ly slash Sha, which is Shiny Happy Art, dogs, cats. Just remember that the first one that I painted was my dog, maybe. So dogs, dogs comes first, okay? So Sha, dogs, cats is the link there on Bitly to get straight through to that page. Um, and you can buy it for $22. It will go up to $44, that collection. And if you're buying it while it's growing, that's my thank you to you for um, being interested and supporting this little um, idea of sharing these sketches um, through each month. So once again, thanks Debbie, there's Diesel. What a character, really, really impressed. So if you do feel inspired to pick up a pencil or a pen and draw your dog or cat, remember that if you are a beginner, it is easier to draw from a photo. Simple as that. As you grow your confidence, you will be more likely to want to draw from real life rather than from a photograph. That's sort of the stage that I'm at now. But if you're a beginner, start with a photo, start with it on your tablet. Like you can even use your tablet a bit like a light box or your computer screen. While you're getting used to where all the shapes are, you're training your eye to see because it is all about seeing. Seeing is the number one skill in drawing and painting. So if I can teach you how to see things better, it's you'll jump through like it's a huge hurdle if you can clear that one the road ahead is smoother sailing okay thank you very much for joining me today i'm now this afternoon apart from taking my daughter some lunch i have to actually film whoops my next paint along of the month club painting which will feature oh i can't tell you i've got to tell the members first um but they've just got this month's and um, I'm, I'm ahead on to next month's of course and uh, preparing for that but very excited to share it when it's ready Okay, until then, pick up a pencil, draw your dog or cat, go to the Golden Bone Bakery Facebook page and like them, like me, and tag a friend in the comments so that you're in the draw. The draw to win a $50 voucher from Golden Bone and um, a portrait of your pet painted by me. Okay, so we'd love to have you in the draw. Okay, enough okays. See you later. Bye.